Welcome to episode two of OpenMRS University. Today I'm going to show you how to create a new OpenMRS module using the brand new Maven archetype built by our Google Summer of Code student, Gautam. This process is still a bit rough around the edges, but it's currently one of the easiest ways to create a new OpenMRS module, and it's the one that we're going to most maintain going forwards. So the documentation for this is on our wiki on the Using the Module Maven Archetype page, and you can see a permanent link at the bottom of this video. You will definitely want to follow along here because I'm intentionally skipping one step here. So um, I can look at what that page looks like. The first step listed here involves adding some lines to the settings.xml in your Maven installation. And I'm not going to show you this step because I have a password in that file that I don't want to broadcast, but Basically, it's pretty straightforward, and you can find those instructions here. So, um, so once you get that set up, the next question here is, what is it we actually want to build as a module? So I personally have always been annoyed that I can't see all of a concept's names in OpenMRS in a power user-focused view. So I'm going to build a module that shows me all of, the concept, all of a concept's names with their locales, types, and tags. So let us open up command prompt here. And you know, at some point, this really needs to work through Eclipse. But as I said, we're a little bit rough around the edges at the moment. So from this command prompt, I'm going, I've gone, I'm inside my workspace directory in Eclipse. And you could do this in any other IDE as well, or just at the command line, of course. And so here, I'm going to type uh, mvn module wizard colon generate. So that's you know, saying what artifact we want to run here. I uh, hit enter and at this point I'm going to fill out, you know, it's going to download some things. Um, and uh, since I've run this before, it, you know, those files are downloaded already, but the first time you do it, it's going to download a bunch of stuff. So now I need to put in the details of the module I want. So first off, what is the group ID, effectively the package we want the module to uh, be in, and I'm going to leave this as the default, and you pretty much always want to unless, I don't know, you're making some proprietary module that shouldn't be under the org.openmrs space. Um, artifact ID is the ID of your module. It should be all lowercase, no spaces, and it should not include the word module in it. So in this case, I'm going to go with concept name. Uh, you know, maybe I could call it concept name management or something, but concept name will do for now. If you're planning on publishing your module, you should actually email the code at openmrs.org mailing list and request a specific name before you do this, ideally. Um, but, you know, you can find instructions about that on the wiki. So I hit enter. Um, I will proceed and just let this be 1.0 snapshot. So the module name is going to be a human readable version of that module ID. So I'm going to call this concept name management. Um, a description, uh, let's call it uh, advanced management of concept names. And I can learn to type. Um, I'll leave myself as the module author. Um, and let's say that we want this to depend on OpenMRS version 1.8.0, for example. Um, do we want an admin page link? Let's say yes. We're going to want to pay a link on the administrative page saying manage, uh, you know, advanced concept management. Um, what should that be called? Um, I'm going to say, you know, in fact, let's call it advanced concept management. All right. Do we want spring-driven MVC pages? The answer is yes. Do we want uh, service DAO hibernate? Uh, in this case, no. We're just going to be displaying existing information and, uh, well, displaying existing information, saving it or viewing it through existing API. So I'm not going to, uh, I don't need this. You might for m many real modules. Um, does this module depend on another module? I'm going to say no. So ready to create. Are these correct? Yes. So at this point, um, the archetype runs and it builds, builds a module. So now I've sort of created um, 
in well in the folder I've got here I've created a uh, concept management where did it go these are not sorted by name apparently well oh uppercase lowercase anyway somewhere yeah concept name here we go this is the thing I just created so now I'm gonna pop over to Eclipse and um, whoops let's see just clean up my um, clean up my working space here so all right so I'm going to now import that um, import that module into Eclipse so I'm going to go uh, file import and I'm going to import existing Maven projects. You can probably find this by typing Maven here. Um, existing Maven projects. And now I need to find the directory on my computer where this is. So, um, you know, within, I had put it in workspace and then in here it's created a concept name folder. So I'm going to choose that folder and Eclipse finds these three uh, POM files corresponding to the API layer and the web layer of this module. So I'm going to, you know, I'll import all of these. Um, one thing that I'm doing, since I have about 30 or 40 Eclipse projects open, um, I'm using a working set. And so I'm going to say that when this thing gets imported, I also want to add it to the university screencast working set. Um, most people won't necessarily be doing this, but anyway, it's a, you know, it helps you manage your workspace, I find. Um, and I'll click finish. So hopefully this imports cleanly, but I've seen this uh, null pointer exception a couple of times. I'm not actually sure what the cause is, but the way to clean it up, I believe, is so this project is broken for some reason, the, uh, the web layer that I've just imported. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to Maven and I'm going to say update project configuration. I believe yeah, that fixes the problem. I'm not, yeah, at some point, hopefully that, uh, you know, the, we'll get that null pointer exception fixed. It actually might be fixed in the newest version of the uh, M2E plugin for Eclipse, which I'm not running with right now. So, um, the other thing I happen to notice when doing a dry run of this is that um, I want to go here, right click on the project, click properties, go to libraries, and for some reason this is set up with uh, the Java 1.5 libraries. I want to edit that and switch it to Java 1.6. Um, and I think I have, to do, and I have to do the same here for the API project. I suppose this is not strictly necessary, but since you're going to be running OpenMRS in a... Oops. Um, ah. I did not mean to click remove, I meant to click edit, so I'm just going to cancel that and go to properties here again. Um, I'm going to edit this and change it to 1.6. So since you're always going to be running uh, OpenMRS in a Java 1.6 environment, and perhaps someday 1.7, but um, you know you might as well write code with 1.6 compliance, and that sort of has some better semantics for marking what methods are overridden in subclasses and things like that. Anyway, so I've now made a couple of edits to, um, well, I've just changed the project configuration to use 1.6, and I've imported this module into Eclipse, into my Eclipse workspace. Um, there are three that actually this module shows up as three Eclipse projects. The top one here is really just a parent for the other two, and, um, well, nothing special to say about it. It has the pom.xml file, the Maven configuration pro pro uh, project object model. Um, so you really don't have to deal with that that much. The API project involves or should have the API layer of your um, of your module. In this case, um, the activator that gets run when the module is started. So I can open this up and um, you know, see that it just does a little bit of logging. It's, it says starting up and shutting down. Um, and it's got the extension point, which actually connects to the administration page. Um, so, you know, and I can show you what this looks like, although there's nothing interesting here. Um, so, 
well, yeah, so I'll, I may come back to this. So um, then in the OMOD, uh, which is the file extension we use for OpenMRS modules, this is actually the web layer of this module. So I believe if I go in here, there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be a first um, form controller just sort of in as, as an example for you. Um, and, you know, I will edit this shortly. But for the moment, um, let's go on to what's actually probably the next step. If this is the first time that you're building, um, building a module in OpenMRS, you probably are going to want to check out the OpenMRS source code to be able to build... Uh, to write code against that source code, you know, check it out, uh, look up function definitions and javadoc and stuff like that. So, um, you know, in real life, I have about 10 versions of OpenMRS code checked out. So, you know, I've already done this, but um, if you're doing your first module development, you probably want to check out the code for that version of OpenMRS that you're developing your module against. So, in this case, I'd said OpenMRS 1.8.0. So, I'm going to here hit Control N, or I guess Command N on a Mac, um, and I want to actually check out a Maven project from SCM. I think that SCM stands for Source Code Management. Um, I'm going to choose SVN as the uh, protocol here, and um, you know you will need to have set up Eclipse with the plugins, as you can see in the first episode of OpenMRS University Screencast. Um, so I'm not going to go through those plugins here. So I've chosen SCM as the pro or SVN subversion as the protocol, and now I'm going to go into um, the repositories that I have set up. Um, I want to get the 1.8.0 version of OpenMRS. So I go into OpenMRS, tags, so those are actually specifically tagged revisions for each of our um, released versions. So I will now go down to find 1.8.0 and I will um, select that. Next, or actually the uh, next thing I'm going to do here is since um, I have a whole bunch of projects checked out in my Eclipse workspace, a whole bunch of OpenMRS projects, I want to make sure their name, you know, I want to control the way they're named. So what I would like to do in this case is I'm going to put 1.8.0 dash and then in square brackets capitalized like so artifact ID um, and what this is going to do is going to prefix um, this prefix the projects that get checked out with 1.8.0 dash that way I can keep them organized uh, you don't have to do this but if you're checking out multiple open MR versions of the OpenMRS code base you may want to you know try a scheme like this so I will now hit next uh, and click finish. So this checkout, um, it's good. I'm actually not certain quite how long it's going to take, so I'm going to pause this recording and resume when it's done. So interestingly, uh, resuming here, I uh, got an error message which I thought I was going to um, avoid by having specified uh, a name template in under that advanced configuration. Um, I'm a little, so let's see what happens here. It looks like it's trying to rename this thing I checked out to um, just slash OpenMRS, and that uh, failed because indeed I already have an OpenMRS um, checkout. So let me just try that again and see if maybe I typed something wrong. Um, I'm hitting Control N, Control for new. SCM, check out Maven project from source code management, subversion, and then I can probably pick, yes, exactly the same, um, the same URL, and under advanced, huh, I think I probably typed uh, what I meant to put under name template under profiles, so let's see, 1.8.0 dash artifact ID in square brackets, Next and finish. So let's try that again. And you know, I'm gonna pause now and resume once it's done checking out. So indeed, that the mistake was that I had typed uh, typed that into the well into the wrong field into profile instead of uh, name template. So 
um, this is checked out and I realize I forgot to specify that I wanted to add this to my um, to, to the working set that I have active right now. So I'm going to go here to Window, Working Sets, Edit, and in this University Screencast Working Set, I want to add the 1.8.0 project. All right, so this is what, you know, uh, if you were just done this in a clean workspace, you would get basically something that looks like this. So I've got now 1.8.0, dash open MRS, the parent project, um, and then there's the API test tools web and web app sub projects. Um, I'm not actually going to build open MRS 1.8.0 right now. I don't really need to do that. Um, my purpose in checking this out is really just having the source code around to consult as I start developing my module. All right, so at this point we've got the open MRS source code to look at and we've got the skeleton of our project built. So in the next video, we'll start actually writing the code, but I'm going to stop this one for now and go ahead and go straight on to the next one, which I'll record in a second.